thinking this way will end your business before you even get started. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about being short-sighted. One thing I've learned from being on YouTube and reading comments and things is there's far too many resellers who are short-sighted in what they are doing. They're not looking at the big picture. They're only centering in on one little tiny aspect of something. If something doesn't work for us, we've moved on from there. If something gives us trouble, we figure out how to fix it and we move on from there. If eBay changes a rule or something changes in the marketplace in general, we either fix it or we move on from there. Something else I hear a lot is that you're a huge seller. You're not talking or thinking about the small time sellers. When I first started in this, I was doing the exact same thing. If something didn't work for me when I started, I figured out either why it didn't work or I figured out something else to sell or deal with. We've never been short-sighted in what we are doing. We've always altered or changed our business to take into account things that happen at a specific point. So if something, again, like the rules or return policy or something changes, I just go with it, fix the issue, change our store, whatever I need to do to move on with it. Now, we've run the gambit. I've pretty much sold anything that you can sell online, including a $250,000 Prevo motorhome. We've sold small items, big items. We sell records into the thousands all the time. High-end jewelry, high-end collectibles, high-end clothing. We've sold clothing fairly well for a long time, for several years. We sold books for many years. Um, you name it, we've done it. I've even delved in sports cards. We've done fishing. I've done militaria. Uh, any kind of collectible you could imagine, anything like that. Even NOS we do. I do RA. I do FBA. I do Merchant Fulfilled. We're on 11 sites. So I've played the gamut all around. From day one, though, I've thought the same way. If something doesn't work for me, I can't figure out how to get the money down, or it's costing me too much money, or I've got returns, or something like that. I'm not looking about what's going on and I have to sell one specific item. I'm looking towards the future. If something gives me hassle, or it's just not making me money, I just move on to something else. There is always something else to sell. So if you're looking at it immediately having an issue in a roadblock, the minute something happens, you're just being short-sighted. The end result is, do you want to be a reseller or don't you want to be a reseller? Any market, anything you do, wherever you work, whatever you do, things are going to change on a constant basis. You're not going to like a lot of the changes no matter where you are or what you are doing. It's just the facts of nature. There's nothing you can do about changes. It's always going to happen. New technology comes out. Things are always changing constantly across the board. I don't worry about that. That's looking at the, the short-sightedness, the, the immediate stuff. I'm looking again, what's going to happen five years down the road? What's going to take me farther? clothing. We did clothing. I made decent money on clothing, but I didn't like it. it. It turned into a rat race. I was fighting to get better clothing. You know, there's so much competition in that field as well. So we moved away from that. Nothing wrong with clothing. Nothing wrong with those who sell it. I've just moved on from that. Books. We did the scanning of the books. Amazon raised the fees. They did the fee raise again two times. We ended up saying it's just not worth it. The bread and butter that we used to make was eaten up by the storage fees after two incremental increases in the fees. So we moved on to something else. My business is still growing, even if I've given up clothing, even if I've given up books, I am still growing my business because I'm figuring out other ways to satisfy or fix or move past a new issue. Now, like with the issues eBay has in managed payments, there really isn't much difference that I can see, big store or small store, big seller or small seller, that's going to affect you differently than it would me. So if you're having issues and returns and things like that, whether you're small or, or big, you need to figure out why there's returns. If it's an area that you're getting scammed in, don't sell those items anymore. Move on to a different category. Move on to different items. We've changed up our business I don't know how many times. So I don't just look at it from one vision or one specific thing. We've sold everything. There's no you know, specifics in what we do. It changes constantly. 
Do I want to sell cars again or mess with that? No. I strayed away from that. We've done stuff like that before. I've sold home goods. I've sold um, dishes in China, high-end stuff, ch uh, crystal, as I said, jewelry, gold, silver I mess with as well, too, bullion I mess with. So overall, I've just switched up or moved to another category. It doesn't really matter. If one type of record, say, isn't selling, I may move to something else. We used to be heavy into certain types of records. We've moved out of those because other records sell more. The markets change constantly. So no matter what you're selling, if you're stuck in just looking at the short side of this, of only selling and continuing to sell the same things you've sold for years, you're not looking at the big picture. Even if something sold for 10, 15, 20 years and all of a sudden you're having issues with it, the category could have issues. There's so many other factors and whatever you do, it changes. Don't be short-sighted. That is the key to making this successful. If you're short-sighted from the very beginning, you might as well just give up before you even start. I am always looking at the year down the road, five years down the road, or 10 years down the road. Some people are short-sighted when it comes to setting money aside for their future or even for paying taxes. Many people see the revenue coming in. They've got the money. They're just paying bills. They're buying stuff with it. They're not thinking what comes at the end of the quarter if you're filing your taxes quarterly or at the end of the year if you're filing your taxes You know, once a year. You're new to this and you're not sure what to do. You're going to be hit at the end of the year with taxes. It's the same basic principle of selling. If something's thrown in your way, you figure out how to get over it and you go and advance your business anyway. It doesn't matter if you're a big store or a small store. It doesn't matter what you're selling, whether you're selling high-end items, low-end items, clothing, books, or whatever. I've sold it all. I've sold pretty much everything anybody else out there is selling or has the chance to sell. Anything is game when we've started off in this. So if something's not selling or the market's taking a dive or it's flooded, categories or something, we just move on to something else. This is what a business does. It adapts on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a yearly basis, five-year basis, ten-year basis. Things change constantly. Don't fall into the trap thinking it's just this way and that's the only way it can be. We're making all this money and now we're not and things are going haywire. You've got to change up sometimes. Doing the same thing over and over again that's not working for you is just a, a terrible way to look at it. You need to change and move stuff up. We just changed again our business model once eBay changed the amount of listings that we have. In all honesty, with what eBay is doing, it's actually going to help a lot of people, at least in simplicity and some of the ways it's going to save your accounts. I've been getting a lot of hate on that. I'm not a big fan of the people who run eBay. We've had issues with eBay. I'm not very trusting on the people running the company. We've been attacked as well. Same time frame as when the execs were targeting specific bloggers. Same thing. So I, again, am not um, trying to defend eBay, but from what I see, this is probably the best moves eBay has done for itself to help the company, I would gather, money-wise and to help us. Fee-wise, some people are paying less. At the worst case scenario, if you compensate for any increases, you're not going to be paying any more than you were paying before with managed payments than you were paying with PayPal. Yeah, there may be some issues with when the money's paid out, but that's just the way a market goes. Things do change. There's nothing you can do about the changes. If you want to do this as a business, you adapt to those changes. You don't look at the short end of this. You look at what the long end is. In the long run, are you going to make a living at this? If you really want to do this, it's not going to matter if eBay changes the game underneath you. That happens on every platform. It happens on Amazon. It happens on Etsy, Poshmark, or any other site that you're selling on. If the site rules are one way right now, like on smaller sites like Poshmark and, and stuff like that, they could change at any time to keep up with what the big sites are doing. If you're an outlier, like Poshmark, for example, again, Poshmark's a good site. There's a lot of people who make a living on Poshmark. But the point is, it's still in the Wild West for them. Things will change, I promise you. They go in stocks and things like that and Wall Street. They're going to be pushing them to do certain things and to fall in line with the rest of the sites. I can tell you right now, eBay went that line, Amazon went that line, pretty much most every site out there. Etsy, they've all went that row. Ruby Lane, all these collectible sites have went that row. Things do change. That's the point. Don't just lock yourself into how it is right now. Don't stagnate your business by looking at the short end of the stick every time. If you haven't run your own business before, you got to break from that habit. I know as an individual, I would think certain ways like that as well, too. I understand that thought, why people think that way. But if it's a business, your business has to survive. You have to move forward with it. 
you should have a vision for the future. Don't just be looking at the short end of it. It will end your business much quicker than anybody else's. Short-sightedness is just not a good business role or model to put in place. Don't look at it that way. If this is your first time running a business, you've just got to change, get your mindset out of that thought. The goal is what's going to happen at the end of the year, the end of next year, the end of the year after that, five years down the road. Those are what matters. I'm not in this just to end up the year making some decent money. I want to have a steady, long-time, lifelong income and business from doing this. I'm not looking at what happens today. And if I'm looking at it as a long-tail thing, as something that's going to be going on for 20 or 30 years more for the rest of my life, changes are going to happen every single year. 30 or 40 more drastic changes could happen in the next 30 years. Don't just look at these little tiny changes. And again, they are little. They're petty compared to what's going on. A lot of this, I think, will help people because it'll force you to follow certain procedures that you may not do normally. Many people who have never run a company just don't have the rigidness, the, the structure of you know, how to keep your business running and how to keep up on stuff and they'll miss things and pass up things. Uh, again, this is just a learning experience for most everybody. So again, adapt to it. Don't let one of these changes get you off your game. Don't let one of these get to you. Keep going with your business if that's what you want to do. It's your business. It, it's your profits. Everything you make is yours. If you've got to deal with the site or changes or rules or laws or something, it's just part of the game. Everybody has to deal with that. It doesn't matter if you're a small company or a big company. We all have to deal and adapt to every single change that's put out there. That's what businesses do. Every business in the real world does that. I know what my vision is and where I want to go with this, and that's what matters. I'm not going to let eBay changing something up or adjusting a day time frame for something get to me. It's no big deal. It's petty compared to the fact that this is paying all of my bills, the fact that this puts a roof over my house, pays for my cars, pays for my kids, covers their medical. That's what's important to me, not whether I have to pay a refund within two days or they change some other policy or I have to put a detailed description in or a condition lines now has to be filled out a certain way or any of that. That's just petty stuff. That stuff will all go away and you forget about it in a couple weeks. So don't think about it now to start with. Don't let it drag you down. Just keep going. Figure out and move forward. That's all you got to worry about. It's your business. Take control of it. Don't let them take control of it. If all you're thinking about is their changes, you're letting them get the best of you and they are running the show. You're not the one in charge in that case if you're letting it bother you. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Simon, the do what I do computer game from MB Electronics. Do that, do